Here they come, here they come, here they come, here they come. Here they come! Ready? Dude, go, 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 Oh my god! Oh my god, wait. It actually fucking worked. How's it going everybody? My name is Northstar and welcome back to another video. Recently, Project Loki, or now it's called Super Vive, has been running a closed alpha playtest over the past week. I played this game about 8 months ago and I didn't really enjoy it. But as of recent, I've been having a lot more fun with it, especially now since there's EU playtest times and I can play with my friends. They also officially dropped their NDA, so I can now make content on it. And therefore I've decided to make a review video for the first time. So without further ado, let's get right into my review of Super Vive. The first thing I want to discuss is the most obvious, the way the game looks. This game looks absolutely fantastic. The art style it has is super unique and I really enjoy it. Games that have really dull colours like Call of Duty or games like that really don't appeal to me that much. I need a game to have colour that stands out to me and excites me. And I must say that Project Loki's art style really stands out to me. I really enjoy the way the game looks and I really enjoy the way the characters look, but we'll get into the characters later on. The layout of the map is super interesting. I love how there's big chasms that you can use your glider to over. I love the water mechanics and how water damages you. I really like how every environment has a different effect that you can have. Some environments have floors that break underneath you. There's even a place called uh, the Stacks or Kobayashi's where you can't even attack or else AI will try and kill you. But yeah, I really like the way this game looks. It's really, really pretty and I really enjoyed it. The next thing I want to discuss is the character design. I will say that a lot of the character balance seems a little bit weird to me, with some characters seeming kind of meh and some characters seeming really, really strong. However, what I've noticed is each character has their use at certain times and none of them are arbitrary or redundant at all. I really like the way all the characters look. None of them really look similar, so it's really easy to identify them in the middle of a fight and on the battlefield. I feel like once they fix the character balance and get everyone kind of on the same level, um, the characters will stand out a lot more to people and people will really appreciate the way they've been designed. None of the characters seem to be a ripoff of any other characters or genre stereotypes, which I also really appreciate, as I feel like every hero shooter now has characters that are all very similar in whether their appearance or their actual character archetype. Every character has abilities that they can use in combat. Supports and frontliners slash tanks can all still be in the fight and do the same things that damage characters can. I'm going to get into one of the first big cons I have of the game now, which revolves around the character's abilities. I am not a huge fan of the amount of CC in this game. I feel like for a game that's so poke heavy, where fights kind of start slowly and then they ramp up um, as teams get less patient with each other, the amount of CC that there can be is kind of crazy. There are often times where you will peek a corner and instantly get stunned for like 3 seconds and that's you dead because there's not really a way to prevent it other than just not be hit. While yes, that is a good way to punish the uh, player for overextending or you know peeking when they shouldn't, I feel like it's not great for the onboarding of new players and even at a medium to high level I feel like that can get really annoying uh, really quickly. I feel like a lot more CC should have longer wind ups um, so they're a bit more visible to see and potentially even shorter uh, uh, lockout times. I also think that abilities like Kingpin's pull uh, should not be able to go through walls. What's the point in having a wall in front of me to protect me from being attacked? if he can just pull me right through it. I feel like that doesn't make sense. The last thing I want to say about the characters is I really really like all of their kits. The effects their abilities have, the way all their abilities look, they all kind of stand out and you can often tell by looking at an ability that's been fired, um, you can tell who fired it and where it came from, which I also really appreciate. Now I want to get into the game systems and I want to get into the game's systems and other mechanics. I really like the concept of picking up items in the middle of a game to passively boost your character stats. Having helmets and swords that can increase your uh, health or damage respectively, having boots which increase your move speed, and even variants of the helmets and swords that increase your mana gain. I feel like that's all really interesting and I like how it's been incorporated as well. 
I also really like having healable slots in my kit. You know, in fights that can be really poke heavy, sometimes you get hit a little bit too much and it's good to be able to just back up, heal a little bit and get back into the fight quickly rather than relying on passive healing or having a healer on your team. And that's another beautiful thing about this game. You don't have to have a team of a frontline, a support, a damage, controller, whatever like that. You can run all damage heroes and still be fine. But you have other means of surviving and healing and regening and stuff like that. That is one of my favorite things about this game. It's not linear in the way that you have to play or having certain hero compositions. You can play whoever you want and you as the player get to use your skill expression to create synergy in those scenarios. I also really like the mechanic of having creeps and bosses on the map. Having the ability to level up by means other than just straight PvP is super exciting. Especially for new players who are often afraid to engage in combat. Kind of gives you an option to get ready and get less nervous and kind of prepared before you go. I also really like the aspect of having day and night cycles on the map. Having monsters spawn more in night than they do in day is super interesting to me and I've never really seen that done before in a MOBA. Each day and night cycle also has a soft level cap. At the start of the game, by only killing monsters you can get to level 4. However, if you kill players you can exceed that level cap. That kind of gives another reward for people who are willing and able to kill other players. So you can go and be aggressive and risk dying, but you can also get the reward of getting more levels and therefore having stronger stats than other teams who haven't done that. All these things make the experience a really rewarding for players who both want to take their time and play slowly and go into battle really quickly, uh, get stats, get levels, and it's great to have both of those be rewarded in a game like this. Another thing I want to discuss here is the game modes. It's nice to have the main battle royale mode, which I'm going to talk about more when we get to the style of game this is, but it's also nice to have the arena mode. In one of the modes, the only objective you have is to be the last team standing. You get to decide how to do that however. You often have to play the battle royale a bit more slowly. You have to farm creeps, you have to level up, you have to play a bit more smart in your approach to how you're going to win the game. Whereas in the arena mode, you just have to fight over a single objective. It's really simple and it's straight combat. We were actually using the arena mode more so to improve our PvP skills. As we found in battle royale games, we were just losing fights over and over. And after playing about 10 arena games, we found that we were able to more confidently take fights in battle royale and we started picking up more wins. So I really appreciate the fact that they have different modes that you can play. It keeps the gameplay fresh and makes it so you're not wasting an entire battle royale game going in um, farming a lot of loot just to die the first fight you have. Another thing I want to touch on here is the top down format. This game is styled around the top down view of a MOBA where you're looking down on a 2D plane of your character rather than first or third person. I didn't really like this aspect but I appreciate how they've added a lot of verticality to the game instead of using your cursor to kind of point where your character is meant to go like in League or Dota you use WASD to move around and your mouse is solely used to aim and fire. That kind of helped me get into it more because I'm not a big fan of the MOBA formats that they usually use. While the top down format is still tricky for me to aim and you know kind of get my abilities off um, I found it a lot easier than other MOBAs. I also think there is still a lot of skill expression in the way you can play the game, which is great for those who want to play this game competitively. Next, I'm going to just quickly discuss how it performs. The game runs very, very well on my machine, even at max graphics, which is really good because of how optimized it is already in its alpha state. There are a few bugs and glitches and stuff, like I'll get stuck on pieces of terrain. Sometimes my glider will automatically deploy when I'm over the abyss, which hopefully gets fixed soon. But even then, at lower graphics, it still looks really, really good. Which gives me hope that this game will be very accessible to a lot of people. However, one of the big things about this game is that it is not very good at helping new players learn the game. A lot of the hero's abilities, when you hover over them, are extremely, extremely brief. And you have to hold Alt to try and bring up the more descriptive versions of the abilities. I wish the brief versions of the abilities had a bit more detail to them. I understand they're supposed to be brief, but a big problem I have is that they're often too brief and miss out massive chunks of what the abilities actually do. Sometimes missing pivotal points of a hero's kit. 
and makes the heroes really really viable. But again, it is an alpha so I'm sure these issues will get sorted in the near future. So overall, what are my final views on Project Loki? Well, Project Loki, now officially called Supervive, is a fantastic battle royale. It's a fresh take on the typical format of a battle royale. Instead of using first or third person, using a top-down mobile-like format with fantastic art and characters design, none of the characters feel arbitrary or linear in the way they play. They all have unique playstyles and this game is full of skill expression that allows the player to fully take control and express themselves in the way they want to play, not in the way the character is supposed to play. Having two different game modes to allow the players to choose the way they want to enjoy the game and with the battle royale utilising PvE and PvP formats, it creates a very very exciting way for a battle royale to be played. The game is optimised and runs fantastic on machines at low and high graphics and it looks fantastic. Aside from the bugs, there's only a few downsides I can think of. The balance being a little bit off, ability descriptions being a little bit too brief and in my opinion some of the CC is definitely a little bit too strong. But again, Project Loki or Super Vive is now in its first closed alpha state with its NDA gone for the first time. This is the first time they're getting widespread feedback and I have more than enough confidence to say that this game will be fantastic when it fully releases. And with the help of the community, this game will thrive with its balance and direction it wants to take. So anyways, thank you very much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed. Please let me know what your opinions of Supervive are and let me know if you want to see more reviews like this. Also remember to show root love and appreciation for those who are working on these games and for those who are making content on them. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.